All right, y'all, uh, I am going to talk about GitHub Actions, full developer automation. We're going to have a bunch of examples, and uh, that's basically what the, the sort of gist of this. I've given variations of GitHub Actions talks uh, at All Things Open, actually, every year uh, for the past four years. Um, so it's kind of crazy that now I'm doing this one remote. Uh, unfortunately, I could not plan to be in North Carolina. I didn't know what the situation was going to be. So it is easier just to say, yes, I'll do a remote talk at this point in my life. All right. so. Let's jump in. Y'all can see my screen. Event reminder, use the chat for questions. We'll get to that. Also, this is a URL that I'll mention. Uh, I originally gave this, this workshop at All Things Open uh, back in 2018 uh, and 19, and uh, also online in 2020. And uh, if you want to get started with GitHub Actions, so you want the basics, the introduction, this is the repo to start with. You just go to the Star Hero repo, read the readme. It'll actually give you the introduction to get up actions, get your feet wet, your feet wet, your hands wet, your hands on the keyboard uh, to leverage action. So check that out. And uh, from there, um, I'm going to introduce a project. And this will be the basis of most of my examples. And how I use GitHub Actions is from this one project. Uh, I made an open source project to manage my open source contributions. And it looks like this. Uh, it's built on top of a GitHub GraphQL API mainly because I, I wanted to learn it uh, about five years ago, uh, back in 2016. And uh, it's a React app, it's got a dashboard. And as I mentioned, it was the reason why I learned GraphQL and why I still use GraphQL today. Uh, GitHub as a whole uses GraphQL as a company, but at that time I wasn't a GitHub employee. Um, I was just sort of learning it as an outsider. Uh, it's also the reason why I, I, I uh, work at GitHub as well. As well. Um, it's because of that one project. And the project itself is called Open Source, and I, I built it based on this one quote. Um, well, I, I named it after this one quote, which is, uh, if you don't got sauce and you lost, it's a Gucci Mane quote. If you know who Gucci Mane is, Gucci Mane's a, he's the godfather of trap music. Um, so if you think of like mumble rap, that's, uh, he's, he's the person to think of making that mainstream. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, on the left is the actual dashboard. It's built in React, as I mentioned, just sort of hand-built components, design the UI. And on the right, the entire backend is a GitHub repo. And I did this intentionally, one, because I didn't want to have to pay for everybody else using instances on S3 buckets or some sort of database like Fauna or something like that. So using a GitHub repo was actually an interesting problem to solve. And uh, I sort of just accomplished that with this project. So this project itself is open sourced. Uh, open sourced is open source. So if you are interested in looking at how this works, highly recommend to check out the docs or check out uh, the code base. Uh, we have at this point we have about 13 repos in open source and open source is yeah it's it's a combination of a bunch of different projects and a discord so if you're interested in learning how to contribute to open source or finding projects that's what this community is for uh, we've got a couple of different sites including open source.pizza but we have explore that open source.pizza which is like sort of a um, a sandbox to test the github graphql api and specifically in the context of open source. So all the data that we have access to, uh, you can have access to right here in the Explore site. If you wanna contribute and provide a feature, you can also test out those features in the GraphQL API uh, using explore.opensource.pizza. Uh, also to mention the doc site as well. Uh, this is built on top of docs, Docosaurus, and it gives you a good understanding of how open source works as well. Uh, I'm glad you're hungry. So speaking of hungry, finally ended up the whole point of this talk, which is GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is a feature that lives on GitHub. We have, it's been around since 2018. GitHub Universe 2018 is when we launched it publicly for everybody. And uh, it's available in every single one of your repos on GitHub. This could be private, it could be public. And it looks like this. So if you click on that tab right there in any repository and you have no actions, we will suggest use, using heuristics on what actions to use. This one's a Node.js project. So I'm suggesting, or I'm getting suggested uh, Node.js uh, CI actions. And it will add some YAML to your repository. So it actually commits it to a file inside the .github folder. That looks like this. This one's actually not even JavaScript. This one's Ruby for some reason. I put the wrong screenshot here, but it's a Ruby CI. Uh, and it's just going to run test uh, and also install some of my Ruby packages. But I guess what I'm getting at is like CI, CD is something that folks consider when they think about GitHub Actions and comparing it. Uh, but my whole thing is like CI, CD is great, but GitHub Actions is so much more. And it's all about workflow automation. So uh, if I can explain GitHub Actions, it is a, a way to take primitives of GitHub. So like the API, and I say primitives because that's what we call them internally. Uh, the GitHub API has been around since GitHub's been around. So about uh, 13 years, 
yeah, 13 years. I'm doing the math in my head. Uh, that's when the GitHub API was, was shipped. The month after GitHub went public as a, well, not public, when they launched publicly as a company. When I say public, congratulations to GitLab for going public. What I'm trying to say is uh, basically you could use GitHub uh, publicly as a user. Uh, the webhooks, authentications, all different API uh, and primitives that you can use to build integrations on GitHub. Now, that could be a little challenging because you got to have a lot of context and got to build a lot of infrastructure to make sure these primitives work. With GitHub Actions, we build those primitives into one feature that allows you to have access to webhooks, authentication, API, uh, which I'll get into in a bit. Uh, but if I could leverage in another analogy that's not Gucci Mane related, which is basketball. Uh, and in basketball, you have this concept. Uh, so this is actually basketball court. Full court, the idea is get the ball into the hoop. So if one player gets the ball to the other side, it's either a dunk or a layup or whatever you want to call it. Actually, there's two, there are two distinct things. But So I'm not explaining basketball very well. But what I do want to explain is that on the court, there is a place where 31% of the shots go in. And this is statistics made through this, uh, the idea of uh, sprawl ball, it's a book, and uh, definitely check it out. But it's kind of like money ball, but for basketball, which also doesn't explain much, but applying statistics to the game of basketball is what I'm getting at. So if you know that 31% of the shots go in at this point, you'll automate or build plays for your team to basically get to that point on the court. So when it comes to automation, you want to actually automate things that are tedious. So one thing that was tedious for us is when we decided to make uh, move off of jQuery in 2018, we automated every time someone touched jQuery, every time a PR was open, it would actually automate the process of looking at the jQuery, give you the JavaScript, and then encourage the developer to, or the engineer to put the JavaScript and replace the jQuery. Even if the code was unrelated to anything you touch, if you touched a file that had jQuery in it, the goal was like, let's just get all jQuery out. Let's go to JavaScript because at that point, JavaScript and even today, JavaScript kind of does everything jQuery was doing really great for the last 10 years. And um, so that made it easier for us to just sort of encourage that process. So GitHub Actions, if I can just explain outside of the primitives, GitHub Actions is um, when you combine actions together, they're called workflows. So what I'm going to talk about is workflow automation moving forward. And workflows are triggered by webhook events. So again, another primitive, which is webhook. So anything that fires a webhook like a push event. So every time you push up to GitHub, every time you open a pull request, every time you comment on an issue, uh, every time you do something within the GitHub platform, you could actually trigger an action with. So uh, you can do some really clever things, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, workflows also include multiple jobs. Uh, at this point, we're 22 asynchronous jobs at a time. Uh, this means that if you're running an action inside of your, if you're running multiple workflows inside of your project, uh, you could have 22 jobs each and the project running at the same time asynchronously. Um, the beauty of this is that you could also do uh, local actions. So you could write a script inside of your project, or you can use third-party actions, like open source actions, like on the marketplace. An example of the open source action is like the Lighthouse action. Uh, I use this for open source, actually. Every time a PR is open, we get a score of what the Lighthouse score is. So Lighthouse being the, the place to show us our performance rating or whether we have accessibility in mind uh, when the PR is open. And what I like about this is that normally with Lighthouse, you don't look at Lighthouse until your stuff's in production. And with the GitHub action, with this GitHub action, you get actually Lighthouse scores at PR. So if somebody's messing up the Lighthouse score at the time the PR goes up, you can actually address that right away as opposed to waiting until it goes to production and someone complains. Um, this is an example of the Lighthouse score that I have in this project. Uh, this is for my actually my um, my personal website, which is still the same score because I've been actually changed that. So progressive web apps, not great. Um, I also want to point out another thing, which is Storybook. I still get comments on this uh, article all the time, but um, we automate the process of deploying our Storybook, which is our design system. So all React components, every time a file has been changed there, uh, we're going to actually update the Storybook. And the way we're doing that is inside this YAML, uh, which is Again, another point to the GitHub Action workflow YAML. Uh, up on line five, we're actually looking for anything in the stories folder or anything in the components folder. If anything gets changed there, we're going to deploy a new version of, of the design system, which again, it's like something you could do manually before you like merge into PR, but why not just do this with your automation? Uh, why well, have to go back and think about, okay, my Lighthouse score, does it change? Does it go up and down? create reports for that when you can just automate that, have those uploaded somewhere, maybe in an Airtable or in some sort of Google Drive or in a wiki to, to keep track of like 
when these things are going up and down. Uh, so I mentioned open source. We use tons of actions. Uh, we have actually quite a few actions that power that connection between the web UI and the GitHub repo that everything's powered on. Uh, and the way we do that is these actions here. These are all local actions specific to open source that we actually leverage throughout the entire um, infrastructure and uh, uh, front end UI. Now, I had a conversation uh, quite a few months ago in the summer uh, chatting with um, uh, Gregor, who's the maintainer of OctaKit. And he actually alerted me of like how he, he goes through automating the process of maintaining 25 plus repos. So he's a solo maintainer. He's got a lot of help. Uh, but for, as far as for the organization and maintain, maintenance, uh, he is the he is the point person. So he has to automate a lot of his process uh, since he is again he's only one individual. Um, so what he's he'd actually started automating is leveraging his project table or his project cards um, to add in new issues that get open. So if there's a new issue that gets open, he has automation that puts it into this, these project cards inside the inbox. So what he does is every morning, rather than look at notifications or look somewhere else, he just opens up this project and then takes a look to see if there's any new issues that he needs to address. And it's kind of like the subtle thing, like you, you would think this would be like a, a given. Um, there is some automation where you could actually set this up uh, by default and get home, but not a lot of people are using this. Uh, so he's able to take anything in his inbox and then assign it to different tables or sorry, different columns, and then identify like, okay, my work here is done. I can go back to writing code. Because uh, a lot of times what happens is like you get a bunch of issues open and you kind of constantly have to go back and forth to figure out, okay, is this open? Is that open? Is, it, is this taken care of? Rather just put it into a column and then go back to writing code when you're when you're unblocked and ready to uh, address this stuff. And the way this is powered is um, with this other GitHub action called uh, Automation Plus, Project Automation Plus. And it's built by a developer at Shopify who leverages the same, the same strategy um, but for the shop, the open source Shopify team. Um, so uh, highly recommend check that out if you're interested in automating just your project board to be more of like an inbox and be able to track stuff like that. But I guess if I summarize what you just saw, uh, there's a lot of repetitive tasks you do as a developer. Uh, so if you have this action that you do every week or every morning or every Friday, uh, why not automate that process? Uh, for me personally, our team, yeah, my team at GitHub, we don't do daily standups. Uh, we do a weekly team meeting, and then we do a weekly standup issue. Uh, so we call it the top five, and we write the top five things we were planning to get accomplished during the week. And like, it's not really sort of like needed for like micromanaging or Scrum, but it's really because a lot of our team we're in different time zones. So like, two members of my team are in Australia. I got one team member in Boston, another team member in Ireland. So like, we're all over the place. So rather than try to get everybody in the same the same uh, uh, time zone to do a meeting. Let's just get all of our information in an issue. And then our meetings are 30 minutes long. In this case for running stats on fantasy football picks. That's a great, great idea. Uh, I point out, this is, I haven't introduced myself actually. So I'm B-Duggy, uh, I'm B-Duggy on GitHub. This is what I look like on the internet uh, with my eyes covered. Uh, and this is actually my, my GitHub profile. So this entire thing is actually powered by GitHub Actions. So like my top eight here, which is uh, my recreation of MySpace. It's actually powered by GitHub Action. I won't go into this because I've got an article written on that, but I did want to point out that all this is powered, again, powered by GitHub Actions. Every time someone opens up a new issue and adds a new handle to my top eight, it's going to be add, added there uh, and it's going to open a PR and it's running by this one folder which has an index to JSA on it. Um, the way I can do that, and this is actually written in Ruby, is because there's an action which actually powered by the Ruby team to set up Ruby to be able to write Ruby code directly in GitHub Actions. And there's a ton of these, like .NET, JavaScript, um, TypeScript as well. Like you could set up TypeScript and all these things to write scripts, not in Bash, but actually in the language of your choice. Uh, so if you think of some automation stuff that you do on a routine or repetitive basis, like think about what that script looks like and maybe even power that through a GitHub Action, like on a cron job. Now, with the Explore site I showed you and also open source and the doc site, we have a continuous delivery um, infrastructure built on actions that looks like this. Uh, and it gives us the ability to not only bundle the site and deploy it on GitHub pages or Netlify or whatever we choose. Well, at the moment, it's, it's Netlify. And, but it also gives us the ability to actually containerize the code 
So that way we can ship that to GitHub packages, or we can bundle that and ship that to the release. Every time we cut a release, that's also automated, which I'll get into in a sec. But going back to the webhooks, every time we push anything to the main branch, we're gonna trigger the entire release cycle of bundling and then cutting releases for the entire project. And this is important because the, the infrastructure and the history of the code that, that we have previously will always have linkable somewhere within the GitHub organization. Uh, and we're, we're doing that through also the power of Docker, which I mentioned containerizing the code and setting it up and, and shipping that. Uh, I think this is the same one side, but going back to events, I want to talk about, I'll take some time and talk just about pull request events and triggering actions. And here is a pull request that happened last week. Uh, shout out to Sam who runs community over there at Hashnode. He found a bug in our docs. He actually fixed a link, uh, which I appreciate that. Sometimes, you know, you just don't check all the links. There's actually an action where you could actually check all links inside your, your, your markdown and it'll actually catch that for us. So we should probably implement that. Uh, but what I'm getting at is um, Sam would open up PR, it triggered an action. Uh, that action actually triggers an action cloud runner, which looks like this. Uh, and what that is gonna do is gonna bundle the entire site, uh, the doc site in particular. And then from there, the doc site's gonna get bundled and deployed to get up pages. And the way we do that is through, again, another action inside of our action workflow. And as a reminder, I had talked about and sort of preface all this is that workflows are a combination of actions uh, and actions could either be local as you saw with my MySpace page or third-party actions where you should see uses piece iris slash actions get up pages. That's actually what's powering our deployment to production is that one action. And it does all that sort of trickery and has a lot of automation. It's open source. We can check the code. We can also contribute to it, which makes it even more powerful and why it's even more powerful than just having a CI or a CD. Cool. The other thing I want to mention is uh, the idea of artifacts. And we haven't even gotten to this. I'm getting into it now. We're actually bundling all this, this bundled code into an artifact and uploading that into the repo. So GitHub Actions runners have the ability to run the host context and content for up to 30 days on in your project's uh, um, uh, repository. Uh, and it's specifically in the artifact section. Now, uploading artifacts is something I'll explain in a sec, um, but I just want to preface, my example is going to be a little different than just the, the sites that I talked about previously, because uh, this example uh, has a different use case, and I really like this use case. So every Wednesday and Friday, I, I live stream on Twitch, uh, BWEO, and I have this integration for my Twitch chat, which is called Slaybot. And what Slaybot does, it takes uh, activity from the chat and it allows people to basically interact with me. So like they can make sounds go off, they can actually use my TTS or my text-to-speech and actually say stuff to me while on stream. So you don't actually have to even turn on your mic or anything like that. You can just type in something and then it will, just, will respond to me and say like, hey, turn your mic on or switch, switch screens. Usually it's like, I'm not looking at the right screen. So people will tell me to, to show screen and stuff like that. So that's what Slaybot is. It's open source as well as under the open source org. Definitely check it out if you're interested in anything like that. But what I wanted to get at is that because this is a, a live stream integration inside of my chat while I'm live streamed, uh, what I, I like to do is, um, what I like to do is actually ship features uh, into uh, the chat while I'm live on stream. Uh, and the way I do that is I, I bundle it up. Whenever I open up PR, it uploads it into the, the artifact, which is here. Uh, and then I build that. And then I take that and deploy it to my cloud provider. So that's what's happening here. We see um, down towards the bottom where it says Azure Web Apps. Uh, that's a GitHub action that the Azure team maintains and deploys in open source that I can take a look at. But it makes it a lot easier to get things up in the Azure. Uh, and the beauty of this is that I can think of an idea in my chat integration while I'm live on stream, open up a pull request, deploy that up to Azure, and then I have a new feature like without ever turning off the stream and going somewhere else. Uh, and I'm doing that because now I can basically bundle in and ship that stuff into a zip file. All right, so the one thing I wanted to point out too as well in this process is I thought of a really cool idea, which a ton of people do this, where I just wanted to have the URL of what gets deployed in my comments of my PR. And with this tool called GitHub Script, uh, which is an open source action, third party open source action. I can write a little bit of JavaScript instead of a YAML file, which you definitely check it out. I don't have time to go into great detail on it. And it provides that comment directly in my PR. So I right hear you have the comment from GitHub Actions. It has a link. 
I can take that link, I can add it to my OBS, into my Twitch, and then I'm good to go. Uh, absolutely amazing stuff. And the other thing I mentioned to you in passing, deploying to GitHub packages. GitHub packages is like the, uh, it's a, an area inside of GitHub where you can actually update um, your package code uh, for release reasons or for sharing. So if you build a VS code extension, and you need to have this, this code accessible for uh, different versions of VS Code or even like some of these third-party tools that are built on top of VS Code, uh, you could package that and then send all your users directly to that package. Uh, what's cool about this is you could also have private packages. So if you wanted to, like the Remix folks, uh, it's the um, open source framework built on top of React um, that those folks, uh, Ryan Florence and Michael Jackson just got uh, funded for. Uh, they originally launched do GitHub packages as a paid license. Uh, so if you're interested in like licensing and stuff like that, definitely check out GitHub packages. But what I want to point out is that for the doc site, we do put this up at GitHub packages. And the reason for that is just to have historic context of what we have deployed in the past. We've got a couple of different versions. We can go back and look at that. Uh, so this is the GitHub packages um, uh, uh, page. I don't know why I was struggling on that. Uh, and then the beauty of that is that we have these GitHub packages as well as the bundled site in a zip. Uh, we could also upload this to our release notes. So we're also automating. So we're not manually cutting releases or uploading this context of this, uh, the packages of the, the, the tarball of the site. Uh, we're actually just uploading those as part of our automation piece. So that's what it looks like here. Uh, if you ever just want to check it out. Um, also to check out releases, like things like OBS and stuff like that, they all leverage releases to um, upload tarballs of their, their sites. You might be familiar. But I bring that up because we just shipped a feature two weeks ago and it also automates generating release notes. Now, I've been doing open source. I've been doing development for a good, good amount of nine years at this point. Um, I switched over from doing technical sales, decided I wanted to do full-time development. And uh, so I've done it nine years. And the one thing I don't ever do is write proper docs or cut releases. And what I found was with projects like open source is that a lot of people wanted to be involved in the project or have some sort of historical context on how this project got to this point. And the way you can do that is through generating release notes in a change log. And um, what we shipped last week was actually uh, the ability to automatically generate release notes. So if you merge your PRs and you need to go back and make release notes on trying to figure out uh, who did what and when, this button right here is going to provide all that context for you automatically. And uh, what it does is this tells you what's changed from the last tag. So if you leverage tags, you should definitely use tags uh, in your uh, releases or inside of GitHub. Um, but by leveraging these tags, you can actually identify who's made updates in between these tags. So uh, in the context of Sam, who Sam I had originally talked about with the, the PR for the doc site, you could also see that Sam is a new contributor. It highlights new contributors. So if you if you do that sort of stuff in your project, it also highlights what contributions were made uh, in between the two tags. And you get a whole change log as well. So that was shipped two weeks ago, that new button. Um, would love to get feedback on that. If you want to hit me up in the DM or, or message me or email me, my information is all over this, these slides. Um, but I do want to point out that if you're if you don't make releases directly in the UI, but you're more of an API or an actions person, here is the way to do it. So if you do actions, I'm um, using the GitHub script as well uh, to use the GitHub API directly. So I'm making a post request as to the release uh, for the, my repository. Uh, and this is all shorthand. These are all variables available to you inside of GitHub actions as well, including the GitHub token, which I don't have time to get into. Uh, the docs do cover that pretty well. Uh, but if just adding this one API request, generate release notes, it will give you the same notes inside your release. Uh, you can also take that copy. You can hit that API, get a markdown uh, template, and you can copy and paste that anywhere you want. So if you want to automate that into your doc site or automate that into a Slack chat, uh, you can do that as well. Cool. And what the beauty of this is now that we're, we're doing this on GitHub is now that github.com, the homepage, we have this little feed right here. Uh, all releases that get updated uh, just generally show up in the feed. Uh, but it gives you an opportunity just to shout out like folks like Crazy Max, uh, who does lots of stuff in actions. He's got a, a ton of actions that I use and leverage, uh, especially for testing and debugging stuff. Um, you can actually see that his uh, GitHub action import uh, GPG action uh, has a release. And this is what it looks like um, with these sort of automated release notes. 
Cool. So I mentioned this because um, open source is like a wealth of GitHub actions and ideas and information. I'm happy to take a discussion there if you if you're just interested in chatting more about this, uh, or as, or as, um, as well. My GitHub handle at GitHub.com is my email, so um, that's just kind of how we do it at GitHub. So hit me up if you have any questions. I'm happy to take questions now as well. Uh, looks like we have quite a few minutes left, but I do have a hard stop in five minutes, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Also, just remember uh, GitHub Craftwork slash start here. If you want an introduction into actions from the very beginning, uh, check that out in the readme. It just sort of walks you through uh, this triggering actions and checking stuff out. Uh, the other thing is that MySpace thing I mentioned. Uh, I wrote up how I, in detail on how I did that. So if you're interested in how I did that with actions, check that out. Um, and then open source, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, if you're more in, interested about open source and contributing, uh, check out the open source YouTube channel. And then as a reminder, uh, if you don't got sauce, then you lost. <laughs>